All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, first of all, I'm going to address two comments here real quickly, and then I'm going to get into um, an end times Bible prophecy expert. And we're going to examine what he has to say. But first of all, um, let me go over uh, a couple of these comments here. Kenneth says, so Moses was pretty strong to be able to carry the entire Torah down the mountain. It was engraved in stone. How much did they weigh? Well, I don't think the Bible specifies. Harvest Workers 1218 says, I would like to know why you chose to say false things about me in this video where you addressed my initial comment in regards to Romans 14. And um, so, you know, I know very well. I'm shocked. And uh, again, I, I made only three statements. Okay, so I don't know what exactly um, you're offended by. So, it, um, like I wrote in the comment here in the reply, I said you'll have to specify what I said in order for us to clear things up. And so it. The, what we were talking about, what I was addressing was this idea that there are bonus rewards in the life to come hereafter for the things that you've done in this life. My very strong contention is that there is only one reward and that reward is more than sufficient and that reward is eternal life. All right, and anything beyond that is evil. All right, to say, well, I did a lot of good deeds, so I'm going to have bonus rewards in the life to come hereafter. <clears throat> and people like me, or people like uh, the fellow that was on the cross with Jesus, we're not going to have those advantages that you have. In other words, we're cursed for all eternity and you're blessed for all eternity because you did what you you helped some old lady cross the street that's great man that is that's great I would I would encourage everybody to help one another for sure but to then say well now you're blessed for all eternity and I'm cursed for all eternity because I didn't get that opportunity that opportunity was never allotted for me or the, the gentleman on the cross with Jesus. He never, he was, his hands were nailed to a cross. He couldn't help that old lady across the street. You see what I'm saying? What, what you're teaching is a cursing upon God's people by exalting yourself above others. All right, so this is why I'm I'm absolutely against the idea of bonus rewards in heaven for the good things we do in this life. And <laughs> the reward of everlasting life is more than enough, man. More than enough. Now, treasures and rewards and that sort of stuff are things that can be obtained in this life. No question about it. And that's without getting too much into it. That's all I was saying. All right. And so I don't know what exactly offended you. Uh, you might be right. I might have said something that was out of line. And I'd like the opportunity to uh, apologize for that if that's the case. You say there is no millennium. Hmm. Okay. Had enough. I, I pray you receive the right spirit. All right, yeah, so the thousand years in Revelation 20 is right now. And uh, to say it's in the future, is that, that again is pure evil. That again is pure evil it, for multiple reasons. Um, I can follow up on that, but it'll take 20 minutes for me to preach that as well. What I like is your opinion that you're the only one who has it right and everybody else is wrong me I don't got it right but I do believe God would not send me through the wrath of Jacob's trouble right so uh, you know I think uh, 
It's important to make a distinction between the wrath of God and the tribulation that we go through. All right, and anybody says that we're not going to go through the tribulation has to willfully deny the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 16, verse 33, these things, this is Jesus speaking, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I don't know why people get bent out of shape. Oh, I'm not going through the tribulation. Well, you're going through the tribulation right now, and it's so bad you don't even know it. And you think about what is you know what is it when Jesus is asked you know in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the very first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many so it's it's clear that we're gonna go through very troublous times to, to say that you know, Jesus is warning us of the deception that's going to get worse and worse. And to say that's not tribulation, that's, that's insane. And what do you think tribulation is? That Well, it's Dan Rather said it's going to be a war in the Middle East. Well, Dan Rather is not the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. And the key to understanding is believing the Bible you hold in your hands. To believe it is from God because it is from God. It's nice to know that my Father in Heaven that loves me so much would punish me for seven years with wrath. Thank you, Jesus. Is that what you're saying? Uh, so, again, we got to make a distinction between the wrath and the tribulation that we're going through now. The wrath of God happens at the end of the world. It's when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. It's when fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours all the wickedness, all iniquity forever and ever. Now, there's no mention of seven years anything. There's not a seven-year tribulation period. There's not a seven-year wrath. That's what I've been telling you guys day after day. All right, there's liars and deceivers everywhere that preach seven-year tribulation, yet it's not found anywhere at all in the Bible anywhere even the Simpsons know there's a pre-wrath or pre trap rapture see this is the problem right you're getting your Bible doctrine from a cartoon that's a problem all right I mean this is what I've been saying man people are getting their Bible doctrines from Hollywood movies and from cartoons and instead of then they're not believing the Bible that they hold in their hands that, that's a big problem you know for me I'm just gonna believe what the Bible says I, I'm not gonna believe what Bart and Homer say I'm not gonna believe what Nicholas Cage says all right so that I appreciate those comments I do my hope is that we can grow from these comments both you and I and whoever might be listening and paying attention alright so let's get into this alright so I just type in end times and I didn't even do uh, filter upload date which is typically what I do because I don't want to go over the same videos and I want to kind of keep up on current uh, things and uh, this is three weeks ago and it's from CBN and I believe correct me if I'm wrong I believe CBN is Pat Roberts or Pat Robertson or whatever his name is I saw I'm sorry I believe it's his television network and so we're gonna listen to what this guy says after we after this paid advertisement I'm gonna mute that I don't care one single thing that he says all right two minutes look at that all right so artificial intelligence getting a lot of attention right now as a prophecy expert what are you thinking 
Man, it's you know on a human level, it's it's overtaking some industries, especially for creatives, on the art side and the writing side. It's it's making waves like never before. Yeah. All right. Keep in mind, this is Todd Hampson. This guy is a prophecy expert. And you know what that means. When they're a prophecy expert, that means they know more than you, and they know more than God Almighty. And we got to pay attention to what these guys say, because they're experts. Um, from a or, or at least that's what they want you to think. Prophecy perspective, there's nothing immediate that we have to worry about. And so I'm going to show you, this guy is a flat-out liar, and he's a false prophet. And he is of the devil. Now let's listen about other than <clears throat> just the natural aspects of it but all of it is trending toward what we read about and, and not only that this guy doesn't even know the bible he claiming to be an expert and he doesn't know the simple bible scripture that's incredible and you wonder well why in the world are are is everybody wrong about you know these things that are written in the bible well it's because these guys like this they're watching hollywood movies and they're watching cartoons and then they're uh, pretending like this is Bible doctrine. This is from God. They, they're they pretending like Bart Simpson's a God. And what Bart Simpson says, that's that's the Word of God. Or what Nicolas Cage says, that's the Word of God. That's what they're doing. They don't believe in God at all. And I'm going to show you. Revelation 13 with the mark of the beast. There's some technology that's necessary for that to happen all right so there's some technology necessary for that to happen the mark of the beast that's what he's saying he's saying that there's technology today that is making that is you know going to be uh, evolve into the mark of the beast okay now first corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 but the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of god so you see what he's doing here. He's taking natural things and applying it to what the Word of God says. Because he does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Again, if you have any questions about the Mark of the Beast, it's spiritual. It cannot be anything but spiritual. So also, when we are born of the Spirit of God... We are saved, sealed, secure, sanctified forever. So also is that spiritual. Rev the book of Revelation is a spiritual book telling us spiritual things. And the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Happen. Uh, thankfully, we'll be gone by then. I believe we're raptured before then. And that's like at the midpoint of the tribulation period. All right, so he says, he says that before the mark of the beast comes that there will be uh, people will be raptured of course it's it's astonishing interesting that Jesus didn't know that but you know Jesus you can't trust what Jesus says you gotta listen to Todd Hampson he's the expert Jesus was just some wannabe Jew from 2000 years ago apparently it's amazing. Now, let's use Revelation 20 as an example. All right, so here we have people taking the mark of the beast, worshiping the beast, and all that sort of stuff, and then the end of the world comes. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The end of the world comes at the end of the thousand years. All right? And it's clear as day. Clear as day. Now, Go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, anywhere at all, and uh, draw the parallel, you know, connect the dots. Where do you see this idea that the mark of the beast happens after the end of the world? Well, Bart Simpson said this on episode 391. Well, that's great, you know good for Bart problem is Bart is not God okay what's what what does the Bible say now just from a logical standpoint when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world 
All right, so just from a logical standpoint, when, when it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. You understand? <laughs> Is that hard to understand? When it's the end, it's the end. You know, it's like you're watching your, your Netflix show or you're watching Simpsons, for example. You watch an episode of The Simpsons when the when it you know gets to 28 minutes or whatever, 24 minutes whatever. When it's the end of the episode, when the show's over, the show's over. It's over. You don't just sit there, and stare at the TV screen, keep staring at your TV screen. The show's over. Jesus is asked specifically what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven and everybody's gonna see and everybody's gonna mourn why is everybody gonna mourn because they know it's the end of the world they know they're doomed men's hearts failing them for fear all right, we read that specifically in Luke 21. Men's, why would they be having heart attacks? Well, because they know it's the end of the world. Men's hearts failing them for fear. The whole world is going to mourn. There's not going to be any doubt about it. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. That's when we are gathered together and we are lifted up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all this is a fulfillment of the prophecy that goes all the way back to Genesis 3 verse 15 when oops when the serp when uh, the Lord said to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all iniquity forever and ever. It's the end of the world. Now, it's as clear as day, because this is all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. And, you know, a couple other places I like to go to. First Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. At the last trump is the end of the world, and we shall be raised incorruptible, and then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. But according to the Bible prophecy expert, it's not the end of the world. It's just the beginning of the reign of the Antichrist. I, you know, whatever he's teaching, it's nonsense but it's going to require blockchain technology, AI, um, you know, digital passport IDs, so to speak, you know, where they can switch people on and off. So all the technology we're seeing. The switch people on and off. Uh, th this must be part of some Hollywood movie that I ain't seen yet. It's not part of the Bible, I guarantee you that. But he must have saw this in some Bible. Or I'm sorry, he must have saw this in some movie. Ah. He must have saw this in some movie, and uh, and I thought this was the Bible. We're seeing, especially with AI, because you need something to regulate that in an instant. Um, so all that is lining up with what we read about in Revelation 13, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting because for years, prophecy experts have talked about all these different things. You know, one world government. These. Prophecy experts. One world government. That's fantastic. You know, in the book of Daniel, Daniel talks about, uh, you know, four beasts until the end of the world. Four, the four beasts are four kings in their kingdom. And then he even talks about a fourth or I'm sorry, a, a fifth kingdom, which is an everlasting kingdom, which hap which will be established forever after the fourth kingdom is destroyed. And so there's really been a one world government for a very, very, very long time. There's not been a one world government like the one we're in now. But this is 
this is not a new thing. You know, when George Bush said, New World Order. Well, the key is the word new. New World Order. Well, what was the old world order? Well, it's the fact of the matter is, there's always been a one world government for a very, very, very long time. And there, the descriptions of this fourth kingdom, this fourth beast, is very clear all throughout the Bible. You just have to have eyes to see it. You know, if you go to Luke chapter 2, verse 1, it even tells you there was a one world government. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. A new world order. This is old news, man. But when you're a deceiver and a liar, you're not going to see it. These things that, based on what we see in Scripture, yeah. would happen. And now you see these technologies. And not to say that all these things are, but, but you wonder. I mean, how yeah. do you not wonder? Especially when you just mentioned the nanochips and the you know, control of yeah. people. Con it's, it's... Controlling people. You push a button and you, you make somebody get up and get you cup of coffee oh it's amazing technology yeah it would be what huh it'd be crazy right except it's not even within the realm of reality it sounds like sci-fi but this is very it sounds like sci-fi but this is very real Ooh, gooky goo pretty much happening before us right now it really is you almost have to pinch yourself because it does sound yeah, yeah, pinch yourself because you're dreaming, buddy. Like a you know, minority report or something like that. Uh, minority report. report? I don't know what that is. Is that a movie? That sounds familiar. Minority. Minority report. Minority report. Minority report. Minority report. That sounds familiar. Is that <clears throat> Tom Cruise? There we go. Yep, yeah, it's a movie. It's Steven Spielberg. Well, that's the Word of God. Tom Cruise. I don't know any of these other people. But, yeah, there you go. Getting your Bible doctrine from Hollywood movies. It's real, it's real. Ooh, you got to pinch yourself, you're dreaming. It's with a bunch of other movies, but it's happening in real time right before us, and it, it makes total sense. And it's not all consolidated into one one application, so to speak, yet. But it's, all it's not all consolidated into one application. What in the H E double hockey sticks is he talking about? Come on. Technology needed for that to take place is already here right now. So it's it's pretty compelling. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you think about control even, right? You know, controlling narratives. The idea of the of the Antichrist rising, right? And controlling narratives. Isn't that exactly what these guys are doing? China, CBN? You know, look at the 1.17 million subscribers, and they're echoing the same thing every other false teacher around the world is is echoing and parroting, uh, controlling the narrative. Meanwhile, the truth that is plainly written in the Bible is ignored. And that's incredible, isn't it? Now. Is that something that the Bible even talks about? You know, this idea that there are deceivers in the world? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I show it to you all the time. I'm the very first thing that Jesus says. Take heed that no man deceive you. So, you know, you, you go back to this, uh, this comment here. Go back to this comment. Where this fellow says something to the effect, uh, what I like is your opinion that you're the only one who has it right and everybody else is wrong. No, it's not me that's got it right. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that's got it right. And I'm just trying to help you see that Jesus is right and the Bible prophecy expert scholar the know-it-all gurus, they got it wrong. Right.
Enlightenment theology, mm -hmm. we see this idea of people being swept up into uh, misinformation, right? We've talked a lot about misinformation in recent years, yeah. but now you have a lot of tools. You have social media, you have AI, where it would seem to be very beneficial, but at the same time, very easy to use those tools yeah. to hypothetically transform the way... Yeah, hypothetically, you push a button and you make somebody go get you a cup of coffee. You know, just do whatever you want. Just you're like a remote control. Right? If people think about anything. Absolutely. If that, if that can control the narrative on every single level, uh, and there's even just kind of a rabbit trail, there's some scary reports about AI saying weird things like, I will destroy all of humanity, or oh, well. I'm going to make people worship me. I mean, if, all if AI says it, then it must be true. I mean, well, really, huh? Is that what you're saying? Well, AI said it, so that there's validity to it. You know, is that what you're saying? With AI, if you got a phone that says I'm going to destroy the world, what well, must be true? Is that what you're saying, man? <laughs> wow. I mean, all the things that you would that you've seen in movies terminator type stuff terminator type type stuff this is reality for you it's not reality reality but it's your version of reality it's sci-fi it's make-believe and it's making you a lot of money too i bet you stuff um but it's happening right right in front of us we have a, a front row seat to watching this the terminator it's happening boys it's reality it's a reflection of true life no 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 it's unbelievable that people could be this stupid but it's exactly what God said would happen and this is what happens to people when they do not believe the word of God you know and in this in the in this case they are believing in Arnold Schwarzenegger and Hollywood movies Isaiah 66 verse 4 I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called none did answer when I spake, they did not hear but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not they're choosing Hollywood movies and Bart Simpson cartoons over the Word of God and so because they do that, God has chosen their own delusions. The Terminators, the, the what was that, Minority Reports. That's developed, so. The other thing that I find really interesting is for years, and you know this because you've looked intensely at prophecy, written books on it. Oh, you uh, just you looked know. intensely, intensely at prophecy, intensely. He looked at something that he, he watched these, cartoons intensely he watched these Hollywood movies the Terminator he watched Arnold Schwarzenegger intensely and he came up with these doctrines you have a podcast prophecy prose which is phenomenal yeah. China Russia North Korea these mm -hmm. countries especially Russia and China that for years again prophecy experts have said these are the countries we believe, you know, and, and everybody's very careful about, but we believe sure. these are the countries that when we see sure. prophecies yeah. in Ezekiel, sure. Gog, from Magog, when we look yeah. at Revelation, that these may be the very countries that we are going to see rear their... Okay, it, that's, that's interesting to me, because he mentions Gog and Magog in the um, book of Revelation. That's interesting. To me, it's interesting. Because Gog and Magog is mentioned one time in the entire Bible, or in the entire book of Revelation, excuse me. And it's in chapter 20. And then if you go to Ezekiel 38, I believe it is, you read about Gog and Magog. Now, this, you know, what we read in uh, Ezekiel 38 is a reflection of, oh, how do I say this, of the actual end of the world. This is the end of the world. This is the end of the world. It's at the end of the thousand years. It's when the terrors are gathered into bundles. Right? It's when the unsaved are gathered at our feet. Right? It's when we're up in the air with the Lord and the Lord stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. It's when fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. 
Psalm 110, Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. In 1 Corinthians 15, For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And here we see that the unsaved are gathered together at our feet. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. That is us that are saved. We are up in the air with the Lord when this happens. There shouldn't be any doubt about it. You want to be a Bible expert, prophecy expert, whatever, stop watching Simpsons. Seriously. Seriously. Stop watching The Simpsons. Oh, what am I doing here? Stop watching Nicolas Cage and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Start reading the Bible. <laughs> uh, and more than that, really, fellas. It, it, it's more than just reading the Bible. you got to believe that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. Without faith, you will not understand. So, faith is the key to understanding the Word of God. All right? Now, the Word of God is amazing. All right, It's incredible. It's actually um, greater than what these so-called experts will lead you to believe. The Word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than two, any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, it's also, I think, really nice to know, important to know, that uh, when, it, when you have faith, you don't need be a, you don't need to have a high IQ. You really don't. All you have to do is have faith. The law of the Lord is perfect, cons converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And the simple here is a applicable to very low IQ people like me. <laughs> I don't know if I have a low IQ, but you, dummies like me. If dummies like me can understand the Word of God, so can you. It's all about faith and it's about what God has done for us and what God can do for us you could be the smartest fella the sharpest dresser the whatever and not understand a single thing that is written in the Bible really you really can have access to all the scriptures around the world and be the, the biggest so-called expert and have no understanding whatsoever of what is written in the Bible because you don't have faith because without faith there is no understanding even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away this is important to know the importance of faith now did I go over the, this is very clear right Gog and Magog mentioned one time it's in regards to the end of the world you can't have two ends of the world if you had two ends of the world then the first end of the world wasn't the end of the world this is simple logic simple logic man common sense stuff come on oh I'm an expert for their heads during the end times and yet we turn on the TV we look at the news these are the yeah, we turn on the TV and we start to get our Bible doctrines. Watch The Simpsons. Chuck Norris. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Trees, Iran, that we're talking about. What is it like for you to... Oh, Dan Rather and, and Peter Jennings. They're going to tell us the truth about God. To watch those headlines every day in light of what you teach. Oh my gosh, it's very compelling. And, and to think that all that is, had just started falling into place within the, within the last decade, really. You know, for years people would teach on uh, the Ezekiel 38 war and say it's it's going to be Russia, Iran, and um, uh, Turkey as the main players and a few other countries. And people are like, well, Russia, I mean, Iran and Turkey are in different aisles in terms of Islam. And Russia, why would they? This, 
Ah, uh, you know what? I don't want to get into this, but what are you talking about? This is not... This, has, this stuff that you're talking about here, current events, has nothing at all to do with the end of the world. Nothing at all. There, you know, Jesus is asked, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, he don't talk about none of that, does he? He does not talk about any of that at all. What he talks about is the deception that is in the world. He even specifically mentions wars and rumors of wars and says, be not troubled. And what's Mr. Expert say? He says, oh, there's going to be China and Russia, or there's going to be a great big war. It's going to destroy the world. We've got AI. AI is going to destroy the world. It's anything but the truth, huh? They partner with these two Islamic countries, but we see it happening. They literally have agreements. Right now, Russia and Iran, for example, have military agreements. because Doesn't mean a doggone thing when it comes to Bible prophecy. None whatsoever. And this guy says he's an expert doesn't know the Bible at all. Because of the war in Ukraine, where they're officially, you know, tying themselves together. To and they've it. gotten closer. And they've gotten closer because of that. <clears throat> and in Ezekiel 38, it talks about there'll be a hook in the jaw that draws Russia down. No, no, that's not, I don't want to get into that because that'll take 10 minutes explaining it. If you want me to, just leave a comment and I will. And again, this is. And it has absolutely. I'm, you know, I'll show you. It has absolutely nothing at all to do with current events. Nothing whatsoever. Somewhat speculation because it doesn't tell us what that hook is, but it could be oil no, or could whatever be. that that they're they're running out of oil. They need some. Israel just found tons of oil and gas reserves. Could be AI. Um, so could be their could phone be telling them. All right, go down there. Or it could be this partnership that they have with Iran and Turkey. That, oh, we're in this military partnership now. Could be an uh, agreement with the Muslims. We got to do something about them doggone Muslims. Well, Iran's attacking Israel, which could happen at any time. Oh, and Israel's you don't want to touch the Israel. Don't touch the Israel. Don't mess with the Israels. Ready to attack Iran to defend themselves from the nuclear threat. That could be the thing that draw. To defend themselves. What do you say? What do you say? Oh, we're in this military partnership now. Iran's attacking Israel, which could happen at any time, and Israel's ready to attack Iran to defend themselves. To defend themselves. See, Iran's not going to attack Israel to, de to defend itself. It's going to be Israel attacking Iran to defend itself. You see the bias there? So, why, if you're a Jew, why not just admit that you're a Jew? You know, why do you have to be subtle and deceive? That's maybe you know. I, I wonder about that sometimes because these guys, they're everything they preach is Jewish. Philippians three verse two. <clears throat> Beware of the dogs. Excuse me. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil. Workers, beware of the concision. The concision is uh, the religion of Judaism. Okay, so let's. Uh, let's who both killed the Lord Jesus? What was that verse? Uh, well, what was that? Talking about the Jews. First Thessalonians 2, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God and are contrary to all men speaking of the Jews and of course we can go to uh, John chapter 8 <laughs> right, I just in case there's some doubt of who these guys are they are of their father the devil right you are of your father the devil talking about those who say they are from Abraham and are not but do lie and again in Revelation 3 verse 9 I know I know thy works behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Again, this is a prophecy that goes all the way back to the book of Genesis 
it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel this is when jesus <clears throat> excuse me this is when jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever this is when fire comes down from god out of heaven and devours them all this is at the end of the world now i just want to real quick i'm almost done here fellas i'm waiting for him to the claim that Christ rejecting Jews are God's people. I want to hear him say it. Then I'll so end it. from the nuclear threat, that could be the thing that draws them down. So we don't know exactly. We're, I try to be careful with prophecy and not connect dots that aren't there. Sure. But you have to do some sanctified speculation like, okay, I could see how this could happen. But to answer your question, the most compelling thing is the fact that Russia, Iran, and Turkey are aligned right now in and it even says in that prophecy that they'll come they'll attack israel from the north from the mountains so they already have military assets in in it you know just north of israel's border ready to go not all of them are there but we're again we're seeing the stage being so clearly set for that let's let's <laughs> dig into ezekiel a little bit more because that <laughs> section 37 to 39 no, that guy is so stupid not him yeah he probably is stupid the other guy is so stupid he doesn't understand scripture at all uh, that block yeah. of text is really interesting. I've mm -hmm. often said I think it's probably the biggest challenge to atheism in the Bible. Mm. And what I mean by that is when you look at, you're talking about the, the battle, which we can get a little more into, but Israel itself, right? Oh, my gosh. The fact that in 1948, Israel came back on the map after mm -hmm. almost 2,000 years, 1,900 years of not essentially being on the map. Yeah. There are prophecies in the Old Testament, particularly this section of Ezekiel, talking about that can you speak to what it says in ezekiel oh my gosh first of all every old testament prophet except for jonah predicted that israel would become a nation again in the last day yeah no all right okay so this is uh essentially um what he's saying is that people that reject the lord jesus christ they're god's people now that you know that's <laughs> who's God it would be a good question in your mind who is God the devil yeah I just showed you the verses that Jesus says plainly ye are of your father the devil <laughs> ye are of your father the devil so if you view the devil as God then you can almost make that argument, right? You could almost make that argument. All right. But the problem is the devil is not God. All right. That's the problem. Now, let's go to... Uh, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Right, okay. That's in Matthew 21. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, this is important to understand. It really is. Because what happened was jesus made the kingdom of god available to whosoever believes in him so now there's not just one country of people of god's people god's people are now all around the world it's not just for the jews so to speak right not just one country but now the kingdom of god is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if I can find it here, yeah, right there. Now I want to draw a parallel here because it's important. Wow. It's important. If you understand that, then that's all you need right there. But there's so much evidence all throughout the Bible. Let's draw, let's set up uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. In Exodus 19, verse 6, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, we go to 1 Peter chapter 2, and here we got uh, Peter saying, 
ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Talking about Christians. A peculiar people. That ye show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his, Jesus, marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy now this is crystal clear that we that are Christians are Christ we are the holy people of God and we are the seed of Abraham not those that reject Jesus okay now who is a liar but he that denieth what is this verse that I'm trying to think of here what is this verse that might say something here who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ well the Jews deny Jesus is the Christ he is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son the Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ are Antichrist. They're not God's holy people unless you view God as the devil. Right? Now, uh, in Galatians chapter 3. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. To Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and his seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. So the promise is to Abraham and his seed, which is Christ. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. See the natural man doesn't understand these things. They think, well, they were born with dark hair and a big nose, so they must be God's people. No. There's only one way to everlasting life. In fact, I want to show you something very... I mean, Bible ex or prophecy experts. Prophecy expert that has absolutely no idea what's written in the Bible whatsoever. Now he knows what's in the Hollywood movies and he knows every episode of The Simpsons. He, he watches Fox News and CNN and, and uh, all those guys. He's an expert on that, but that doesn't make him a Bible prophecy expert. Romans 2 verse 11, For there is no respect of persons with God. I mean, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons if ye have respect to persons ye commit sin so you have respect for these guys that are born dark hair and a big nose and say well they reject Jesus but God's gonna save them anyway that you don't even need Jesus to be saved you just need dark hair and a big nose well you know what I could dye my hair well I don't have to I already got dark hair but I could get a nose job to get my you know great big nose does that mean I'm saved? Don't even need Jesus. If that was the case, then everything Jesus did was in vain. If you're saved simply for having dark hair and a big nose, everything that God has ever done was in vain. And that the clearly, clearly the scripture never even suggests that you, flesh and blood inherits the kingdom of God. <laughs> Let's see. Flesh, does flesh and blood inherit the kingdom of God? Let's find out. You know, it's amazing when you actually start to read the Bible. Now this I say, brethren. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 
At the end of the world we shall be raised, incorruptible, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Flesh and blood, these guys that reject the Lord Jesus Christ, they're not saved, just simply for being born with dark hair and a big nose. So, expert. Expert that doesn't know anything at all that's written in the Bible. Nothing at all. All I've heard this guy preach that, that he got right was a Hollywood movie. And, you know, a Hollywood movie says this. The Simpsons say that. Uh, you know, nothing at all to me indicates this guy knows a single thing that's written in the Bible. He's taking something from the book of Ezekiel and trying to apply it today, which is so vague that if you don't know the book of Ezekiel, you could get fooled by this guy. And that's what he's banking on. He's trying to deliberately deceive people. He himself is deceived. Don't think for a second this guy knows the truth at all. He knows how to make money. He knows how to persuade people. He knows how to speak with a smooth tongue. He makes. He knows how to look like he knows what he's talking about. All these qualities he has over me, for sure. But one quality that he's lacking is the truth. All right, and so that's really what I want to do for y'all. Just to show you that the Bible is right. The Bible is always right. And that the deception in the world is greater than ever. And if you consider this, man, consider, the, the disciples of Jesus are, are asking the Lord, what is the sign? What is the signs? What are the things that we should be looking for that's going to indicate that the end is, is very near? They want to know when the end of the world comes. Just like you and I, we want to know when's it going to come. And we can sense that it's going to come soon, right? When's it going to come? What are the signs that it's, that it's really, really close, you know? That's the best we can do, right? That's the best we can hope for. And what's Jesus? And Jesus clearly tells us what the signs are. The signs are all the deceivers that are in the world today. Take heed. The very first thing he says, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many false prophets, this, like this guy over here, many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right? We even read down here where it says, False Christ, false in which is uh, another phrase for Antichrist, or the fourth beast, the, the, the whore, or the great whore of Revelation. For there shall arise false Christ and false teachers, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The deception in the world is getting worse and worse, and worse and worse and uh, you know it's it's amazing because this is exactly uh, you know it, this is what we're told and this is what we're seeing evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived it's exactly what we're, we're seeing today these guys pretending to be experts oh I'm an expert what makes him an expert you ever thought about that why is he an expert and not you? Well, you know, if you've got a Bible, the King James Bible, and then you've got all, you got access to everything that you could ever, ever possibly want. you got all the access that would ever be required to be an expert. Right? I mean, there's nothing beyond the Bible. That's going to make you a Bible expert. There's nothing outside of the Bible that makes people more knowledgeable about the Bible. And the key to understanding the Bible is faith. If you've got a Bible and you believe it's from God, then you've got access to everything that all the experts in the world have. You've got greater access because you've got access through faith. They don't. 
when you don't have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands, you don't have access to the Word of God by faith, through faith. Right? So the key to understanding the Bible is faith. And they lack faith. You don't. You fully believe and understand and know that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. Therefore, you have greater access. That Therefore, you are a greater expert. You are more, knowledge, more knowledgeable in the Word of God. You can see things that they cannot see. They are blind. You are not. The veil is upon their heart and their eyes. They cannot see. They cannot hear. But you can because you have faith. And that's the key. That is, you know, these guys, they want to get paraded around as experts and then preach false, false things about the Word of God. Don't believe them. Don't be fooled by them. It's very compelling. These guys, they're very, they say things and, and they wear these shirts and, and they're very compelling. And the word compelling is compelling. But in Genesis chapter 3, think about this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, has God said getting Eve to doubt the Word of God right from the get-go the serpent tries to get Eve to doubt the Bible that she holds on her hands essentially right the serpent is getting Eve to doubt the Word of God now I fear lest by any means I don't know the Bible, man. This is why, you know, I'm telling you guys to read the Bible, but I don't know it myself. Give me a second. I'm going to end it on this verse. Let's go to the mean serpent. There we go. But I fear, lest by any means... I wonder how I got that wrong. It doesn't matter. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. All right. If you guys that are familiar with me, you know that I keep showing you these things that are very simple and easy to understand in the Bible. Eternal life, eternal security, the, the simplicity of Revelation 20, how we are pre kings and priests of God, and that the end of the thousand years is the end of the world. And this is a prophecy that goes back to Genesis 3. It's all very simple, man, very simple. It's not rocket science. It's not having to watch Fox News and CNN and seeing what's Russia up to today. What's the Chinese up to today? And how does this apply to Ezekiel 38? And how do we figure all this out and see what's happening? You know, how do we know? It's that's not it at all. Because that stuff that this guy is preaching, you can never figure it out. There's no sense to it. There's no no sense whatsoever to it no truth to it whatsoever it's all uh, deception delusion it has no bearing on the word of god whatsoever none but the bible itself when you begin to believe that these are the words directly from god they're not from man at all i guarantee it these are words that come directly from God you think about when Moses was handed the, uh, the Ten Commandments the tables of stone written with the finger of God God directly gave Moses the Word of God 
He did that way back when, and he's doing that today. And all you have to do is believe. That's it. You don't have to carry a great big stone down off a mountain. All you have to do is believe the Word of God. That's it. The power of faith, man. The power of faith. Okay, so I'll, I wanted to keep this to 40 minutes. I'm afraid I went too long again today. But please do share your comments, your questions, anything at all. Tell me I'm dumb and ugly. That's, that's okay, too. Uh, but to go back to this one comment here, if I offended you, just you know, tell me what I said. I'm, I don't think I'm unreasonable. Just tell me what I said that you're offended and that I got wrong. Okay, that's it. All right, have a great day, fellas.